Good evening, everyone. Uh, we're going to begin the ceremony here shortly, but prior to starting the ceremony, I would like to take a few moments to remind everyone of a few important items. First, please look around and locate where the closest fire exits are to where you are seated. Second, please be sure to turn off or silence your cell phones and electronic devices. Thirdly, this is to be a dignified ceremony to celebrate the accomplishments of these students. Please be respectful to each graduate and their family by staying in your seats and applauding appropriately. Don't worry, pictures will be taken of graduates as they receive their diplomas. Finally, as graduates enter, we would ask that you stand and remain standing until the completion of the national anthem. Please remove any head covers during the pledge in the national anthem. Also, as graduates leave at the end of the ceremony, we would ask that you stand again and remain standing until all graduates have exited the gym. Also, just to let everyone know, we are live streaming uh, the ceremony. Um, we hope that you enjoy the ceremony and we thank you for coming. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance led by Miss Autumn Roberts, then the playing of our national anthem by Miss Caraz. Gentlemen, remove your hats. Congratulations to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, the nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Thank you. You may be seated. Good evening. I'm Mr. Morrow. I am the principal and coordinator here for Antietam Academy and the Evening High School program. I'd like to welcome you to the 2017-2018 Washington County Public School graduation ceremony. We understand this is an exciting time for both the graduates and their families. So we'd ask that everyone be respectful of all speakers and conduct themselves in an appropriate manner. Graduation is a time to celebrate that is to be approached with dignity and respect. I thank you. At this time, I would ask that Tavon Moses come forward to introduce our special guests that have joined us here this evening. Tavon will then introduce our Washington County Public School Board members who will be part of this program and also deliver a brief message to the graduates. Tavon. On behalf of the graduates, I would like to welcome the Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Michael, Director of Secondary Education, Dr. Akers, and other distinguished guests in the audience. Thank you for joining us for this special occasion. <laughs> next, next, I would like to introduce the Board of Education members who are joining us and participating in our ceremony. First, I would like to introduce Mr. Stan Stauffers. Mr. Stauffers worked for Washington County Public Schools as an educator and coach for 42 years before retiring. He's now served as the vice president of the elected school boards and he will be assisting later in the ceremony for the class of 2018. Please welcome Mr. Stauffers. <laughs> Our next selected board of member is the current president of the Board of Education and will be addressing the graduates, Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams was born and raised here in Washington County. She was a teacher and administrator here in, Was in Washington County for 35 years before retiring. Please welcome Mrs. Williams. Thank you, Tavon. Good evening, everyone. It's an honor and a pleasure to be with you this evening, along with my colleague, Stan Stauffer, representing the Washington County Board of Education. On behalf of your school board, I offer congratulations to the members of the class of 2018. To all the parents, grandparents, siblings, aunts, uncles, friends, teachers, counselors, administrators, and any and all others who have helped the soon-to-be graduates to achieve this milestone, a big thank you. Thank you for teaching, for encouraging, for guiding, and for supporting these young people as they strove to achieve and overcome hardships and obstacles to complete the requirements necessary to graduate. Members of the class of 2018, a door is about to close behind you, the door of your public school education. Yet this is a commencement, a beginning, a start, a launch. As you receive your diploma, you will, you will begin anew. New opportunities await you. Opportunities for you to discover, to learn, to transform. I'm going to share with you something Dr. Jill Bolt Taylor, a brain researcher and an author of My Stroke of Insight, she said this years ago at a, commencement, excuse me, at a commencement speech that she gave at Butler University in Indianapolis. She said, we have the power to pick and choose moment by moment who and how we want to be in the world. Soon to be graduates, members of the class of 2018, Look ahead to the new things you're going to do. Be interested in your future. Concentrate on your strengths and talents and the strengths and talents of others. Look for the good. Always, always look for the good. And remember, 
as Dr. Bolt Taylor said, you have the power to pick and choose moment by moment who and how you want to be in the world. You get to choose how happy and how successful you will be in life. You have that power. I wish for each of you a safe and healthy journey of self-discovery and personal growth. Be proud of your accomplishment in reaching this milestone. Take this gift of a public education and invest it in the life and success that you want. I wish you all the very best. Congratulations, class of 28. Thank you, Mrs. Williams, for that very poignant and meaningful message. At this time, I'd like to make a few remarks to our graduates, but before I make those remarks to the class of 2018, I want to say that no one person or group should ever go unrecognized on such a momentous occasion. I would like to take this time to recognize all the parents, guardians, and supporters for all the support that you have given these graduates, soon-to-be graduates, over the last 13 years of their school. There's another group of individuals in the audience this evening that have also supported these students during this journey. I would like to recognize the faculty, staff of Antietam Academy, Evening High School, and all the other Washington County Public School staff members with their hard work and dedication to help these students get to where they are now. Both of these groups are people that are deserving of recognition. Now on to my comments to the class of 2018. As always, I determine the length of my comments based upon how well you did in practice. Well, you got an A plus, so my comments will be short. I wanna just take a moment and just share, the Antietam Academy's vision is together we conquer the impossible. You came in here thinking that maybe, maybe it was possible, but most likely it was impossible. You were going to reach that goal that everybody had talked about, and that was getting your high school diploma. People had written you off in some cases, but you came here, and that's why our vision is what it is, because it actually has a twofold meaning. Together, we conquer the impossible, because I am possible. You are possible. You can do anything you want to do. There are members sitting here in this class from many, many discussions we've had in my office. There are people here that want to be part of NASA. There are some chefs sitting here. There's some mechanics sitting here. There's some radiologists sitting here. There's some people that want to follow in their parents' footsteps and take over their parents' business. Don't let anyone tell you you cannot do that. Do not let anybody put you down. Work hard. And the key to that, there's three keys. First of all, dream big. Dream big. Then, to get those dreams, make a plan. Make that plan. When you make that plan and when you dream big, you're going to run into people that are going to be naysayers. Naysayers. They're going to also be negative. There's a popular author, author named John Gordon, a motivational speaker also. He's wrote many books about positivity. And one of the things he says is you basically have two dogs inside of you. One is the negative dog. One is the positive dog. You can choose which dog you're going to feed. But if you feed the positive dog, it's going to be the most powerful dog inside of you, and it's going to push you forward. And along your journey, you're going to meet people that he calls energy vampires. Those energy vampires, they're going to try to suck the life out of you and suck you down with all their negativity. You can't do that because 
of where you come from or what you've done or anything like that. Remember, keep feeding the positive dog. It will lead you. It will help you get there. Most of you have worked with me extensively, some of you many years. You know how many times have you seen me in a negative situation or a negative attitude? What kind? Never? Right. Even though sometimes it's frustrating, we got to feed that positive dog. Then you got to have that plan. The plan is going to get you to the dream. I always ask students, you know, they tell me their dream. I want to be, you know, I want to be the next great rapper. I want to be the next great athlete. I want to be whatever. Those are great dreams. Those are great things to aim for. But my question back to them all the time is this. What's your plan to get there? You can say you want to be something, but you've got to have a plan. So plan out what you want to do. Then go and set goals that will help you through your plan. Set those goals, and they will take you step by step through that plan. And then that dream, there is a high probability it will no longer be a dream. It will be a reality. Don't give up on your goals. Work hard for your goals. A gentleman that we had here visit this year, some of you got a chance to meet with him and talk with him. A friend and a colleague, Mr. Spoiler, okay? He said this one time, and he actually said it to the staff, and he said it to some students when he met with them here. He said, you know, going through life without goals is like trying to drive the car from the trunk. It's tough. You're not going to do it. Have goals. Some of you think back to your first intake with me. One of my first questions was, what are you going to do when you graduate? And you know, and Devin's laughing, and you know if you answered, I don't know. I was right back at you going, what do you mean you don't know? You got to know. This is your life. So set those goals. Reach for those goals. Now, in a few moments, it's about time for you to get your diplomas and go out and make a difference in our society. Make a difference in our world. There are 18 of you sitting here that can change this world if you really want to. But let me tell you, we need game changers in this world right now. We need people to step up and step out and help lead. And let me tell you, there's not a single one of you that can't do that. You're leaders. I've seen it. You showed it here at Antietam or at Evening High or, or the setbacks that you've had in other places I know you can do it, so lead, go out, make a difference in society. And when you go out into that society, remember how you felt at one point in time when people wrote you off, otherwise what we call marginalized. Be willing to walk to the margins. Be willing to go to the margins, because if we go to the margins, we erase the margins. I got a gentleman sitting behind me that is an English teacher. He's a good friend and colleague, and he's not going to like what I say as an English teacher. But, and you guys, it's going to be hard, some of you, to relate to this. But back in the day when we went to school, we had, you know, notebook paper. That was about it. And there were margins. You know what the margins are, okay? And if you wrote over the margins, oh, my, big X's and circles and points taken off and so forth like that, that's okay in English class, makes sense. But in our world, if we wanna be successful as a society, successful as a community where you live, we gotta erase the margins. And the way you do that is you're willing to walk to the margins. Walk out there with the people that are on the margins. You can learn so much. Give back to society. Be a contributing member of society. And you know what? Each one of you can be. I know that. I've observed it here at Antietam as you went through your classes. So in closing, remember, there's going to be failures, but failures are learning opportunities. 
All too many times in, in, our, in our society, and even in school sometimes, we make failures as a bad thing. Failures are a good thing because they help you learn. They teach you. So don't be afraid to fail. But when you fail, get back up. Readjust yourself. Try again. And I know I'm kind of, in that situation, kind of preaching to the choir because some of you have experienced that many, many times. Some of you are laughing because you know you've experienced that many, many times. And we've been there together. And some of you are recalling me going, you got to get back up. Let's go. You can't give up. But when those failures hit you and they get you down, remember, we, the staff at Antietam, the staff of Eating High School, are here. Our doors are open. Our phones are open. Yes, you're starting a new journey of your life, a new beginning. You're going out on your own. But that doesn't mean you can't go back and ask for help. If you need a reference, if you need to know where a job is, or if you need to know how to get to a school to get into college later on if you decide in the college, we're here. All of you can get a hold of me. You know that. Just because you walk across this stage today and get your diploma, that doesn't mean you go in your cell phone and you have to erase my cell phone number. All of you have it. And I think every time you've accessed it, I've answered. I will be there. We will be there. So, graduates of 2018, congratulations on this great accomplishment. And let this accomplishment be the basis for great accomplishments in your lives as productive members of society. Thank you and good luck to all of you. At this time, we have prepared a short slide and musical presentation, so if you would direct your attention to the screen, and this is the first time the graduates are seeing this too, so they might be giggling and laughing a little bit, but that's okay. That's what it's all about.
Just so you know, first of all, I want to, on behalf of the graduates, thank Mr. McGinnis for his hard work and dedication. He does that every year. That will be placed out on YouTube, and you will have access to that as long as you want. So, moving on. Often in alternative education, you have to kind of step outside the box from time to time, and that includes even in a graduation ceremony. In the past with our graduation ceremonies, it's been difficult to get one or even two students that were willing to come up here in front of all these folks out here and speak. This year, though, we got three. One of them's up here going, say two, say two, say two. <laughs> now, that, saying that, I'm going to bring each one of them up one by one, and they're going to deliver a message, a brief message to you and the graduates. So at this time, I'd like to give a warm welcome to Miss Erin White. Good evening, distinguished guests, friends, family, staff, and soon to be former students of Antietam Academy. I would like to start off by expressing what a tremendous honor it is to be here today, not only as a graduate, but also as a speaker. For the longest time, I doubted I would ever make it this far in my academic career, but now that I have, I feel a great sense of accomplishment for myself, as should all of you. This journey has been far from easy for, for me. When I came to Antietam Academy in, ninth, in my ninth grade year, I was a scared, vulnerable young girl, but I refused to let anyone see that side of me. I put on the facade of a tough, unruly child, and I soon started playing the role as well. I found myself more focused on getting into shenanigans than focusing on my education. Soon enough, I landed myself into legal trouble, which greatly affected my progress in school. I ended up getting detained in a juvenile detention center, which stunted my progress in school even more. From there, I went to a behavioral treatment center where I was able to slowly start working my way back on track. After I left there, I was back on track academically, but I still had the I'm gonna do what I want mindset. I returned to Antietam Academy as an 11th grade student, taking both 11th and 12th grade classes in order to graduate one year early. I never really struggled academically, but in my personal life, I went through my share of trials and tribulations. I ended up getting myself into trouble again and was sent back to a juvenile detention center, which caused me not to graduate early. After that, I was sent to a group home in Harford County where I attended public school as a, public high school as a senior for the first time since I came to Antietam Academy in ninth grade. At this point, I had given up on myself. I was disappointed in the direction my life was going in. Instead of using this as my motivation, I let it get the best of me and my grades began to slip. I stopped doing my work and just sat in class and daydreamed about how I wanted my life to be. But I still never took any actions to make it that way. I eventually got myself kicked out of that group home due to bad behaviors and at the age of 17 with a negative record like mine, I didn't have many options left as to where my probation officer could place me. The only place that they could find for me was an independent living apartment in Baltimore City. When I moved into my apartment, I had no form of supervision and I took full advantage of that. I was living very irresponsibly from that time until around August of last year, one month after my 18th birthday. At that point, I realized my life was not where I wanted it to be and I needed to get it together. I moved back to Hagerstown with my family and slowly started building myself back up. I got a job, bought a car, and started being more responsible. A couple of months later, I found out that I'm pregnant with my daughter, and that, that really gave me the motivation that I needed to get my life back on track. I knew that in order to have a successful life that I always dreamed about for myself, I needed to graduate high school. So I reached out to the lovely Mr. Morrow, who over the years I have become close with, and asked him 
if it would still be possible for me to graduate, considering I was only two credits away from doing so. With his help, I enrolled myself into evening high school classes at the age, and at the age of 18, I am finally standing on this stage getting ready to receive the high school diploma that at one point in my life I never thought I would get. Throughout all the years of coming and going from school to school and struggling to catch up, I'm standing here today graduating with a 3.6 GPA. Even after giving up on myself, I was still able to pick myself back up and motivate myself to accomplish everything I could only dream of doing. After everything I've been through, I still made it here today. So one thing that I want each and every person here tonight to remember is that no matter what obstacles pre present themselves to you, you have the power to fight past it all and come out on top. Thank you. And that's just the first one. <laughs> you can do it. Thank you, Aaron, for those outstanding remarks. At this time, I'd like to ask our next student to come to the podium. So please give a warm welcome to Miss Kiera Powell. <laughs> people bet against us but here we are some of us have been at Antima for many years and finally I'm proud to say that this journey has come to an end I'd like to personally thank my mom Mr. Morrow and Mr. McGinnis among others for helping me get here each of us graduates has a future just as bright as we make it as for myself I'm going to continue my education at a university well I swore up and down that I wouldn't even cross the stage but here am I now here am I am here I am now excuse me getting ready to just do that, but also speaking to you all tonight. If I can do that, then anything's possible. Thank you. Thank you, Kiera. Very nice. Uh, the final speaker I'm inviting to the stage is Miss Zavaria Burgess. graduates and family. My name is Avari Ayana Marie Burgess. My name is, means gifted, one who is compassionate and loyalty. I like my name and I knew it suited me. Now that I know what it means, I like it even more because when I look back over what was brought to me to be a 16 year old early graduate, it is because in some ways I have been gifted with the mindset to regardless of whatever is going on with me and around me to stay focused and what is right for me to, at the time so that I could stand here before you today as a 16 year old early graduate. Some of you know me as Only One Z, which is the name I gave myself when I came to Antietam the first time. The name speaks to my compassion and loyalty to myself, I guess. In many ways, I have been driven to stay loyal to myself and my goals. When I started high school, I was an outcast. There were a lot of black kids at Wingsburg, so I stayed to myself. I earned pretty good grades near the end of the year. I got into a little bit of trouble that required me to start my 10th grade year at Antietam. I did not want to be at Antietam, but soon found a place and a space to explore what been being gifted meant to me. Although I came to Antietam for fighting, I learned that the kind of fighting I was doing put me in situations that I couldn't take back. I had learned to fight in many different ways. I made relationships with students and staff and became a positive student voice by getting involved in the Student Government Association. I use my voice to show compassion and loyalty to others as well as myself by sharing my gifts with them. I grew as a person and soon earned the right to return to Williamsburg High School. 11th grade this year, I moved to South District. <laughs> I was using my loyalty and compassion in another way. 
<laughs> it was crazy. I wasn't using my gifts to help me or others. I was failing my classes, not attending school, and fighting everything and everybody. I was putting myself in situations I couldn't take back. Then I got sent back to Antietam. At first, I didn't even want to go there and fought it. My intake was rescheduled and rescheduled and rescheduled. But when I got back to Antietam, I found I was still only one Z before I got Yana Marie Burgess, gifted, compassionate, and loyal. Staff treated me not like I was when I went back to fighting, but as when I left. With the love and respect I wanted and more importantly needed, I kept fighting, but in a more positive way. I eased back into into Student Government Association, <coughs> applying myself to my classes, and before not long, not only I was passing my classes, but I was given the opportunity to graduate early. If I changed my schedule around, I did, and here I am standing before you today, a 16-year-old graduate. I have already been accepted at HCC and will go there with confidence and compassion of who I am and who I can be. I guess what I want to say through all the situations, I stay focused on who I was and what I wanted to be. I wanted to be my mark in a good way. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is true to all of us here today. You stay focused, graduating because of that. We all leave Antietam Academy with our mark. We are here and we will be different in a good way because of us, the class of 2018. Congratulations, good luck, and stay focused. Thank you, Zavaria, for those very moving words. You did it. Congratulations. At this time, I'd like to invite Mr. English, my assistant principal here at Antietam Academy, to make some special recognitions. Even though every student in this graduating class has accomplished so much to this point, we wanted to take a moment to recognize a few special accomplishments. We wanted to recognize those in the class who have been accepted into a college and we will we'll be attending that college in the fall and those who are going into the military. Will these students please stand at this time to be recognized? The Jim Spore Letter Scholarship is two $250 scholarships that are being awarded tonight to do two deserving students. This scholarship was made possible by a generous donation from Mr. Spore Letter, who recently visited Antietam Academy and worked closely with staff and students at Antietam Academy and was impressed by the accomplishments of both and was moved to make a generous donation to our program to support the scholarship and other supports for our students. It is my pleasure to announce this year's winners. They are Lawrence Kosian and Zavaria Burgess. Mr. Stauffer, would you kindly join me at the podium as I recommend to you the class of 2018. The members of this class have successfully completed all their high school coursework and have met all the requirements for graduation as prescribed by the Maryland State Department of Education. They are therefore declared by the faculty and administration eligible to receive their high school diplomas. Based upon the recommendation of Mr. Morrow and as the representative of the Board of Education of Washington County, I hereby declare that the class of 2018 is eligible to receive their diplomas of graduation. Mr. English, please come to the podium to call the seniors forward to receive their diplomas. Graduates, stand after the word diplomas. Oops, I'm not supposed to read that. <laughs> you knew. I'm sorry. Zavaria Burgess.
Kai Ford. <laughs> Caleb Gorey. <laughs> Jamie Hodge. <laughs> Tyler Jarrell. Brady Jenkins. Robert Jennings. Devin King. Lawrence Kosian. Jordan Love. Tavon Moses. Billy Pompel. Kiera Powell. Autumn Roberts. Austin Sykes. Andrew Smith. Aaron White with honors. And Anari Wright. If you notice some of them giving me the cover back, that's because they practice so much and we only use one cover. So I had to tell them, this one you get to keep. <laughs> so, all right, Mr. Stauffer, would you please join me in the presenting the class of 2018 and the turning of their tassels? This time I'll try to read it correctly. In recognition of the certification of these graduates, the recommendation by Mr. Morrow, and by the authority vested in me by the Washington County School Board, I do take pleasure in presenting the graduating class of 2018 for the conferring of high school diplomas. Would the class of 2018 please stand? It is my sincere privilege and honor to ask you to move your tassels from the right side to the left side. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Stauffer. Seniors, I now officially declare you graduates of Washington County Public Schools. Faculty, family, and friends, I now present to you the class of 2018. Would you please stand as the graduates recess from the gym? Thank you very much. <laughs> 